So hi and welcome everybody to the topic titled Types of Modulators in Communication Systems. In today's lecture, we will be talking about the different types of modulators that we use in communication systems in order to produce the modulated signal that we are going to transmit over the wireless channel so that we can effectively demodulate it and get the data successfully. So the first type of modulator we talked about is multiplier modulator. Multiplier modulator is the most basic the most basic modulator which is basically you get your message signal and multiply it by the carrier to get the modulated signal. Nonlinear modulator is when your function that generates the signal multiplied by the carrier is including nonlinear equation. Anything with square, square root, uh, cubic, uh, x to bar something becomes nonlinear. So example, u of t, a, a multiplied by x of t plus b multiplied by x square of t. If you, if you assume that x1 of t is cosine 2 by fct plus m of t and x2 of t cosine 2 by fct minus m of t, then apply x1 of t to this equation, which is nonlinear, you get y1 of t. And x2, x2 of t, put it in y, you get y2 of t. S subtract them from each other, you get a signal like this. Let me show you the signal. This is the signal. What, what, do, you, what, what do you notice here? That this, this my message is multiplied by the carrier. So this is the modulated signal I'm looking for. So this means it's possible, very possible, to generate a modulated signal without using multiplier modulator, by using nonlinear non modulator. And basically you just follow the math. You have your nonlinear modulator, you have defined x1, x2 x of, x of t, put them in the equation here, you get y1, y2, subtract them from each other, you will find that this whole function reduces to this basic one, and you have the modulated signal. You can verify it at home and make sure that you can get this, but the point that you can get the modulated signal in the desired form that can be transmitted over the channel. Now, how do you do that with the, with the diagrams with a, by using block diagram? You get your message signal, M of T, yes? You sum it to cosine omega CT to get X1 of T, which is this X1 of T, M of T plus cosine, M of T plus cosine, this is by diagram. And the other X2 of T is equal to M of T minus cosine omega CT, you have X1, X2. Go to nonlinear, which is this function. Nonlinear block is this function. The output is one y1 of t, y2 of t. Subtract them from each other, you get z of t. Z of t is the modulated signal, this one. Now, I have this term and this term. I told you that this term is the modulated signal. What about this term? This is my message signal itself. I don't want it. To avoid it, you use filter, so that you exclude it. You just take the signal, you use band pass filter around WC. You exclude this signal and only take the signal at higher frequency. We call it modulated signal. Or we can just forget about it, because it's in the baseband signal, and baseband signal around zero, they won't propagate over the channel. Clear up until now? This is the second type of modulators that we have. We have multiplier modulator, nonlinear modulator. What's, what else? We have also switching modulator. Switching modulator basically multiplies the message by a simple periodic function. Suppose W of t is periodic with a fundamental frequency fc, then W of t equal to summation of d and e to power J2 by FC and T. The weighted sum of complex exponentials that are impulses at the multiples of FC 
then multiply your message signal by this series of weighted sum of complex exponential basis function what do you get you get your message at fc at 2fc at 3fc and you choose any frequency you want and you filter around it and you use it as your modulated signal so this is what we call switching modulator the equation kind of Fourier transform but basically instead of multiplying with just cosine you are multiplying by multiple cosines with different frequencies because e to power j is related to cosine Basically, you have your m of t and you have w of t. After you multiply them with each other, when you multiply this train of pulses with m of t, what do you get? You get train of pulses but with the shape of m of t. The envelope here, m of t. Yes, as you can see. And then band pass filter to get the higher frequency. What about in frequency domain? You have m of f, which is this. And after you multiply it with the train, you get m of f at different frequencies, like this. And this is in time domain. So basically, this is the second type of modulator, a switching modulator. You have a series of pulses and you multiply it by your message signal to get the modulated signal. We have ring modulator as well. Ring modulator uses diodes and transformer baseband in order to get your modulated signal. But as you can see, it's a little bit more complex than the previous ones. We rather prefer to get our message directly with little, with little number of multiplication, with little number of proce processors. So basically, uh, the ones that are complex, we don't prefer to use them in practice. We usually always in practical wireless system we use the multiplier modulator the first time but this is for your knowledge that can be used to generate your modulated signal we have also frequency converter multiplying a modulated signal by a sinusoidal moves the frequency band to sum and difference frequency well we already know this you have your modulated signal you received it if you multiply it by 2 cosine omega c plus minus omega i t, you get plus of it, minus of it. When you multiply by cosine, you make shift to the right, shift to the left by the amount of the frequency you have. And then you use band pass filter tuned to the frequency you want it to get your modulated signal back. For example, the input signal was with w c, the output signal with w i. You control that by the filter around which frequency band you want your filter to be used and you get your for example after you, you multiply this signal with this you get all these replicas all these versions anyone can be used for modulation because they are at higher frequency but if you want your antenna to be small 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 you go and choose this if you want antenna to be large, you go and choose this because lower frequency, larger antenna, higher frequency, smaller antenna. We call it superheterodyne and subheterodyne. Superheterodyning is omega c plus omega i, subheterodyning omega c minus omega i. Both modulator and demodulator use a multiplier by carrier signal, basically. You always have to multiply by a carrier. If you don't have a carrier with your signal, you don't call this modulation. Modulator uses band pass filter. Why band pass filter? Because you have your signal at a higher frequency. You put filter around this frequency so that you get your modulated signal. And demodulator uses low band pass filter. Why? Because my message around zero, low pass band I want. I want my message around base band to get it. Basically, here, for the ones who don't, didn't understand from word, word explanation. After you multiply your message signal with the modulator, you have your signal at a higher frequency. Let's say this signal, FC. To let the signal pass only to the air, you just put a filter here. And you, you, we call this filter band pass filter because it's a round band at higher frequency. 
In demodulator, you want your signal around this, around zero, your message. To use, what do you what do you use? You use low pass filter. Low pass filter around zero, high pass filter around higher frequencies. The carrier used by the demodulator must be in phase with the transmitter carrier, taking into account transmission delay. This shows you, tells you that in coherent modulation, the carrier you use at the transmitter must have the same phase of the carrier used at the receiver so that you can reconstruct your signal successfully. Otherwise, you will have a synchronization problem. And if you have this problem, you cannot get any of your data back. The receiver has a local oscillator that must be adjusted to stay in phase with the received signal. Yes, there is local oscillator must be tuned and adjusted to, so that the phase of this local oscillator at the receiver is the same as the phase of the carrier at the transmitter. To do that, what do you do? You use voltage controlled oscillator that's controlled by phase locked loop. So what's the purpose of using phase locked loop? Question, what's the purpose of using phase locked loop? The purpose is to make sure that the phase of the carrier at the receiver is the same as the phase of the carrier at the transmitter. <coughs> In this case, you will be able to demodulate your data successfully. The phase of the carrier in the received signal must be extracted correctly. Demodulation of double sideband sing single carrier signal. Suppose that the signal is not ideal. You have some shift, shift in time. T minus T naught, T minus T naught, as you can see, where theta D 2 by FC T naught. This shift in time causes phase shift. And basically, if the signal shift is large enough to make one cycle, your demodulated signal will become nothing. This shows you the importance of synchronizing the phase. Because let's say Let's say, give you an example. This is your signal. This is your signal. And your, this is the carrier at the transmitter. And the carrier at the receiver is the same. Then both are in the same phase, no problem. The multiplication will not, they will not cancel each other. But what if they are opposite of each other, like the other one, like this? Let me draw it like in, a, in another color, and you have it like this. When you sum these with each other, what do you get? Sum that. What? Sum this with this, this with this. They will cancel, you will get this line at zero. This shows you the importance of phase synchronization. The phase must be the same, otherwise you will not get your signal back. We can end up transmitting with a cosine and receiving with a sine. These are orthogonal and we get nothing. We get nothing when, when they are orthogonal to each other. We must make sure that they have the same phase. Yes. If I tell you, the transmit phase of the carrier is 90, 0. And the receive the phase of the carrier at the receiver is 90. What's the output message signal? 0. Because they are out of phase. When they are out of phase, I, the thing I draw, I just drew, you will experience and phase in your system. That's very bad. We don't want this to happen. We don't like it because it kills your communication. That's why we use phase loop, loop voltage controlled oscillator and make sure that the phase at the transmitter is the same as the phase at the receiver. So, if the goal is cheap receivers, then we can eliminate the phase locked loop. If you want to design a cheap receiver you don't, and you don't want to use phase locked loop, 
you just ignore this circuit that's responsible for phase synchronization. But what can we do in this case to make sure that the phase is the same? We can transmit the carrier signal, the carrier signal along with the modulated one. For example, this is your, look here, this is your modulated signal, yes? M of t multiplied by cosine, this is modulated. You shift it at high frequency. With this signal, what do you send also? You send the carrier, A cosine 2 pi fct. Now the receiver, the receiver, he doesn't need to use phase locked loop to make sure the carrier, the carrier phase is the same. He just extract this carrier from the received signal and use it to modulate. The tune A cosine 2 pi fct contains the desired carrier in correct phase always. Whatever the phase you receive, you just use it. As long as A is larger than the magnitude of M of T, then we can recover M of T from the modulated signal, the modulated received signal. So this is basically one of the advantages of transmitting the carrier signal with the modulated signal. You don't need phase look loop. You just get the carrier from the modulated signal and use it to modulate your signal back. Commercial, in next lecture we will talk about single sideband AM and then after finishing that we will talk about vestigial sideband which is another type of modulation and then quadrature amplitude modulation. So with this we finish and conclude our lecture and stop here and we continue next time. Thank you for your attention. See you.